When you first use your super band, make sure to inspect it. If there are any nicks or cuts in the band itself, you want to make sure that you do not use this band. Once any of the bands uh, do get nicked or cut, uh, which can occur from, from standing on it, uh, from doing lateral steps and things of that nature where it potentially could come into contact with rocks or pieces of glass that might be on the, the turf that you use or the carpet that you use, you want to dispose of the band because the band over time will develop a deeper cut and will at one point snap. So you want to take uh, great care in inspecting the bands prior to using them. Also, whenever you stand on the bands, if you're doing a lateral step or an upright row or curls, make sure that there is absolutely no tension in the band before yourself or your client take their feet off of the band. This will keep the band from ever coming back up and snapping up towards their face. Also, too, when using the band, keep the band away from the face. Don't set the band up where you might be doing like a, a bicep curl or a high pull or something like that, where if the band ever does break, it can snap back up towards the facial area. You just want to take great care in using the band properly, inspecting the band over the course of uh, time that you have the bands so that you will always have a band that's going to be safe and effective for yourself and your clients. With the various PNF stretches that we're going to do here, you can use any of the bands, the half inch, the one inch, the one and three quarter, or the two and a half inch band. The bands allow the user to determine how much resistance they want on the PNF stretch, and then it can also shorten up the length of the super band as well uh, to increase the intensity of the stretch. We're simply going to go through uh, some hamstring, some glute, uh, some low back and glute, and then some upper body, uh, shoulders, chest, back stretches with the PNF stretches that we demonstrate here. This is only a few samplings of what you can do with the super band as it uh, pertains to PNF stretching. Do what is a comfortable range of motion. Hold it for as, as long or as short a duration of time as you would like and do what you feel comfortable with. Again, these are just some simple uh, variations of the PNF stretches that you'll see in most uh, personal training studios or physical therapy clinics. Go through a range of motion that's comfortable for yourself range of motion that is pain free and again hold it for as long or as short as you would like and with each repetition all we're simply trying to do is use the band to help increase the range of motion that we're getting on each particular stretch with the over and backs that we're doing for the chest shoulders and back just obtain a base of support that feet are about hip width apart knees are flexed and relax my stance and just go through a range of motion again that's pain-free and what's well within your limits. On the super band lateral step, what we want to do is select a band that I can control the resistance uh, through the entire range of motion. Typically half inch and one inch bands are the most common. The band is going to be on the middle of my foot, so as I step on the band, the middle of my foot is on the band. I take a lateral step gigantic lateral step and then a small baby step after that. My knees stay bent. You'll notice my toes, my knee, and my hip are pretty much in a straight line. My chest is up. My elbows are tight to my side and the band is always taut. I don't want to have the band uh, just relaxed and, and no tension on the band. Do a band that you can control through the full range of motion and your speed is fairly slow and controlled. For the barbell squat, you're going to need to imagine that I'm inside a power rack while I do this drill. The bands are attached to the outside of the bar and the bands are anchored to the floor using a fairly heavy dumbbell. Just perform my normal squat repetition with the bands on the outside of the bar. Once I'm done, I just rack the bar as normal and then take the bands off after completion of the movement. For the lateral shuffle, I have two one-inch bands tied together, anchored to either a dumbbell, a fence, or a power rack. I'm going to shuffle out to the cone, drop at my ankle, my hip, and the knee, touch the cone, and return back in a controlled descent towards my start point. Continue this movement for as many repetitions as necessary. For the footwood acceleration and backpedal, I have my band attached to my anchor point. I'm going to 
accelerate out to my target, which is cone. I'm going to decelerate as quick as possible, dropping up my ankle, my hip, and my knee. And then I'm going to control my deceleration back towards my anchor point. On your stop, try and stay as low to the ground as possible. Control your center of gravity, and then control the movement back to my anchor point. On the forward bear crawls and the reverse bear crawls, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick my hands up, drive with my legs towards the end point, which is the cone. And then as I'm being pulled back to my anchor point, I still want to try and pick my feet and my hands up at the same time and control my movement back to the anchor point. Stay low to the ground, stay in a fairly decent push-up position, and accelerate out to my start point and back to my end point as quickly as possible. On my high knee runs or my high knees, I'm going to attach my two bands to my anchor point. Try and drive my elbows back, the movement's at the shoulder, knees come up, and as that band wants to try and pull me back to my anchor point, I'm not going to allow it, but I still want to try and maintain my really good posture and technique on this drill. Using the super band to do squats, I simply step on the super band. Make sure that the super band is safely secured under the middle portion of your foot. Simply do my squats by placing the band up over my head and it should rest securely across the top of my shoulders and then just do your typical squat technique. You can use the band too as a gauge. Keep your knees inside of the band. That way it'll allow you good teaching cues uh, and if you have a mirror or anything like that where you can always check your technique, it's a good assistance to use. The squats with the iron cross, I simply step on the band like I did with the squats previously, but now as opposed to having the band rest across my back, I extend my arms out to the side and hold the band out as such. This exercise is a little bit more difficult than just the squats as I involve the shoulder but my technique with the squat still does not change. Squats with an overhead press simply have me now taking the band and pressing it straight up overhead. I want to try and keep my trunk erect, arms extended directly up overhead. Pretend you had a wooden dowel or an Olympic bar extended up overhead. From the side of the lateral profile, what you'll see is my trunk stays up. I want to try and keep my elbow in line with my ear. I don't want my arms to shoot forward. I want to have that band pretty much rise straight up and straight down. On the lateral lunge, I'm going to have my feet split greater than shoulder width apart. Chest is up. Band still secured safely up around my neck. And I'm just shifting my weight over left to right. As I shift my weight over, you'll notice that I try and keep my hip, my knee, my toe in a straight line. And as I shift from the left to the right, my opposite leg is completely extended. On the reverse lunge, I have the band now under one foot. My foot that is holding the band in place does not move, and I simply drop down. My back knee hits as close to the ground as possible without jamming into it. My trunk stays up nice and tall, and I primarily drive off that leg that's the lead leg. 